We play and call it work. Hey everybody, Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com and it's time for another Horus Heresy vlog. We haven't done one of these in a while because we've been busy playing Horus Heresy, but I've got a really cool army update of some changes and some additions to my salamanders that I want to show you. I'm up to roughly 5,800 points. It almost fits within one primary detachment, but I have either one troop or one heavy support too many, depending on how you build it. So let's take a look at the whole army. The first thing you may notice if you've been watching the Salamanders battle reports or the vlogs is that everybody now has a unified base. And that is the one that Lee designed, which is the lava base. And on top of that, I had a lot of these tacticals. The first ones that I got, I forgot that when I sent them off to the painters, that they would have the smaller bases. And so Lee basically rebased all of the models that didn't have the right size or the right type of base. And that's really added to kind of making the whole army look like a unified whole. It's actually harder to notice the fact that some of the greens are different from each other. You can still see it obviously, but the fact that their base is the same really makes a difference. On top of that, because they're on this little bit of cork, it makes the model so much taller, and then the size of the base just makes them look larger. Whereas before, the tacticals I had on the smaller base looked small compared to the other ones. Now they look huge because uh, the Forge World ones are, are, they stand up taller than the ones that you get in Kelf. And so you just have this nice large size. So let's walk through, and, and I also have a bunch of additional stuff. Now I've had, I, I want to tell you about the painters as well. I've had, I hope I get this right, six different painters working on this army. And I'm not going to remember exactly what everybody did, but um, I, I do remember the painters, and so I'm going to give a shout out to each of them. We first off, of course, have our own painter, Lee. He's done some of the vehicles, obviously all the bases and a few models here and there. Uh, especially there's a conversion of a Praetor, if you actually look over here. This Praetor right here, he did that, and he converted it to have the Dragon Scale Storm Shield and the Mantle of the Fire Drake, making him a two-up, three-up Cataphracty Terminator with Eternal Warrior, and he's been awesome. He's basically a mini Primarch when I've brought him in games, giving him digital weapons, giving him extra attacks, he's got Mastercraft, and in some ways he actually hits better than Vulcan, because uh, Vulcan has less attacks and no Mastercraft for some reason, so it's really strange. So Lee done, did, has done a lot of work. We've got uh, Ben Snyder from Demi Human Paints. If you go to facebook.com slash Demi Human Paints, he did a bunch of the tacticals and a couple of the Praetors. We got Justin from thearmedpainter.com. He did some tacticals, one of the Rhinos, the Contemptor Dreadnought, which looks awesome. Five of the Fire Drakes, five of the Pyroclasts. And then we've got Raven, he's a local guy, you can check him out at ravengarfield.com and he did a buttload of the tacticals. I think he's done like 60 of them, plus a few terminators. And then we've got Mark, of course, from facebook.com slash painting. He did the big assault ram, the Sakaran, and the Vindicator, so some of these heavy ones. And I just love the flame patterns that we've had on, so this, is, this one was done by uh, Mark, and then the Predator was done by our in-house painter Lee, and then we've got, you can kind of see the difference in all the, the effects they put on the barrels, and the assault ram up here looks awesome with its flame patterns. Just very impressed overall with what these painters have been able to pull off. And so the latest additions from Raven has been a lot more tactical bodies, and including support squads and heavy support squads. So let's just run through from left to right everything that you see in this army. Now remember this is, it's about 5,800 points. And, uh, and it's not always, uh, it, it's not an either, it's not I'm going to bring this whole thing, it's going to be either or. Because typically we play at 2,500 points or 2,000 points. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention maybe the most important one, which is of course the Primarch Vulcan, and he was painted by Awakened Realms, and they did a fantastic job on him. He's got a big scenic base, I just don't have him on right now, because I've actually used him in a couple games. Start with the most boring, which is just the tactical marines. And so we have lots of them here. We have a 10-man squad, two 10-man squads here, and then a big 20-man blob. Now, I miscalculated when I asked Raven to do more of them. I got too many sergeants made. So I either need to get more tacticals with bolters made or just live with the fact that some of them will be proxying as regular guys with bolters. And in each case, each sergeant, I usually gave some sort of power weapon and either an infernal pistol or a hand flamer. And some people say that you can't do the two weapon swap, but it says that you can exchange his bolter and or bolt pistol. And so obviously you can do one of each. 
And I just like to do that. Although I've been finding that I've also just been wanting sergeants with regular bolters because they're cheaper as well. So these are the kind of the core troop choices, the compulsory ones. And then over here on the left, we've got a support squad of 10 Meltas. I've used them. They're, they're cool because in my right of war that get mastercrafted, but I find that often lots of things have armored ceramite and they're riding in a rhino, so they've been having a hard time getting into combat. And since I'm staying away from drop pods, because I'm trying to stay thematic to the salamanders, it makes them a little harder to use, and they're very expensive. Then we've got our hit squad. Now this thing is ridiculous. You'll probably rarely see me bring 10 fire drakes, but there are 10 fire drakes with thunder hammers. And we got, in this squad right now, we've got two praetors. There are fire drake praetor, I like to call them, with the thunder hammer and storm shield. And then just a regular one with the paragon blade and the volkite charger. We've got some apothecaries too that can join various squads. And so, and Vulcan of course could join this and mount inside of the big old Spartan that Lee put together and painted up, which just looks awesome and is actually quite good. I've ba basically so far when I brought a Spartan full of the guys, it's managed to deliver its payload and that payload has managed to do a lot of damage. What I want to do with these guys though, I played a game against uh, World Eaters and he had one guy in there with chain fists and that one guy took out my Spartan. I realized Chain Fist and Thunder Hammers are essentially the same stat line, double your strength, AP2, and uh, unwieldy, except the Thunder Hammers have Concussive, but the Chain Fists have Armor Bane. So I'm going to get Lee to cut off the hands of five of these Thunder Hammers and magnetize them so that I can have five Chain Fists as well, because I've been finding the Concussive is not really used that much, but going up against Armor, Strength 8 Thunder Hammers usually just, unless it's Rhinos or something, but trying to take out the other Land Raiders, I need some more armor cracking and chain fists will do it just well. So they'll look a little different with the chain fist in one hand and the storm shield in the other, but I still think it'll be cool. And then we have five regular cataphracty terminators with lightning claws and I've got a land raider behind them, a land raider Phobos, um, just in case they want to mount inside of that or somebody else wants to use it because various people could actually take it as a dedicated transport. And right in front of them, I've got our 10 man pyro class squad. Now this is an awesome, although expensive squad each of them is Artificer Armor, so 2 plus armor. They've got a regular Flamer, which is Strength 5 with Salamanders. But the, the different thing about the weapon is that it can also be fired as a Strength 6, 6 inch range Melta. So that gives them that option. Plus, they can all take Melta Bombs for only 25 points for the whole squad. And, um, and, and they're Artificer Armor, so they're very survivable. And 5 up Invuln against things like Plasma and Melta. But they're very expensive, which is why I wanted to add some other support squads with flamers, which we'll get to in just a second. So right beside them, we've got a veteran squad. Some of these could swap out and just be as tacticals. Missile launcher and flamer. And we've got a rhino that they could ride inside of. All the rhinos have flamers on them except for one. And then here is the two support squads that just got added. So these haven't been used in games yet. 10 man squads of flamers. I can essentially bring 20 flamers in two rhinos for the same cost as seven pyro class inside of a land raider. And, uh, and it's, Obviously, they have their advantages and disadvantages, but they're pretty awesome. And then this heavy support squad on the end. I love the way the Volkite culverins look. They almost look like they belong on noise marines, as they, they, they look like they're sonic blasters in a sense. And these things are four shots each, strength six, deflagrate. Deflagrate being that if you cause an unsaved wound, they take another strength six hit. That doesn't continue. It, they are heavy weapons, though, so I've got to stand still. But still, if you get a 10-man squad in there, that's 40 strength 6 shots that can deal more wounds the more they actually hurt you. So that should be fun. It'll be by, it kind of goes a little against my fluff where I don't like things that don't move around, but uh, I just wanted them. They look so cool. And the Volkite's kind of a salamander themish thing. And then we've got our armored column in the back. We've got a Vindicator with the Demolisher Cannon. We've got a Predator in Furnace. This one has the Magna Melta, but I actually can swap it out when it's magnetized to also have the Flamestorm Cannon. It's got heavy Flamer sponsons. I wish that I had actually done different ones, the last Cannon ones, just because I've pretty much never used the heavy Flamers, even though they are strength six, thanks to being Salamanders. But, um, but yeah, it's, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but now I, I wish that I had the other ones. And then in front of that, we've got a Contemptor Dreadnought, the Salamander one, which looks awesome. And I've got various magnetized arms that he can take. And then we've got the big Sakaran Venator, Venator with its uh, neutron laser beam or neutron beam or whatever it's called. Strength 10, AP 1, two sh ordnance shots. And if it gets a penetrating hit, even against super heavies, they have to snap fire their next turn. 
So very, very effective. And it has a bunch of heavy bolters, which can be mag they're, they're magnetized with last cannons as well if I really wanted to. But it makes them have the option to go against a vehicle, or it can use the heavy bolters and go against some infantry. And then last but not least, we have the Cestus Assault Ram, which is our flyer, which is allowed to ram. And it has a big twin link magnum Elta and missile launchers. It can carry 10 guys and ignores bulky. So it can actually carry 10 Terminators if it wanted to, which is handy. It doesn't ignore very bulky, so a Primarch in there would take up three of the 10 slots. But I could bring five Fire Drakes and a Praetor and an Apothecary and um, still have room for a Primarch as well in there. So it could be a, a pretty bad kill squad inside of that. And it's, it's pretty strong. It's got the five up invuln against its front armor. And when it rams, it's always kind of the strength 10. In essence, it's strength 10 ordnance AP2 because it gets to reroll when trying to pen and it also gets to add one to the vehicle damage table. So it's like when you ram with it that you're inflicting a strength 10 ordnance AP2 hit and that's pretty awesome. Obviously if you have a payload, if there's guys still inside, you don't want to be doing that quite yet. But, uh, but very, very powerful flyer. So backing out, that is my 5800 point army of salamanders. Uh, plans for the future, I do have a Storm Eagle that I'm going to be adding, a couple more Predators I want to add, probably another Rhino or two. I have some more Dreadnoughts we're adding, a Leviathan, a Darodeo. I want to add another Contemptor Dreadnought or two. And then I think, I, won't, I don't think I'll ever be done, but there'll always be new stuff I want to add as, as updates are done. But uh, my focus will switch to, to building up some other armies. Right now I'm working on a Solar Auxilia army, hopefully within the next two or three weeks, you'll actually see two or three thousand points fully painted, ready to, to go in battle reports. But this one definitely, now that I have a lot of bodies on the field, I feel like it's getting fleshed out nicely. Just need a little bit more support, and I think it'll be an incredibly deadly force with lots of options, depending on who I am fighting against. So I hope that you enjoyed this. Of course, leave your comments below what you think I should add next to this army or modifications I should do to it, or anything else you want to talk about related to the Salamander's Horus Heresy army. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more Horus Heresy battle reports and videos. Happy Wargaming.